I think the challenge is to start um, looking for a, a, another concept of gorgeous, you know, because we can all be gorgeous. <laughs> Hello, guys, and welcome back to um, The Skin You're In, back for episode three. That's six foot three. Um, I am very excited for you guys to be here today because um, we... I talked to my student exchange student from Argentina, Lucci. She is amazing. And the reason I had her on today is because um, she was a model. So she went into the modeling industry and dipped her toes in and decided she uh, it wasn't for her. So um, I'm very excited for this video because I love talking to her and catching up. Obviously, it's on Zoom because... <laughs> She, did, she lives in Argentina, um, but I'm very excited for you guys um, to see what she has to say. We basically, I just ask her questions and we talk about the modeling industry as a whole and how it can be better and how it, how it is now and also how it can be better. Before I start this video, I, I did just want to touch on something, however, and that is... <sighs> there are some times um, when I think maybe what I'm doing here it, it's not necessary I, I, I do have that thought um, often um, just it's my anxiety going a little bit you know um, but I, I do have that thought because you know getting started and everything is hard so I'm wondering whether it's worth it and then I hear stories about girls making packs to starve themselves because they think they're fat and their friends are doing it so they don't want to be left out or they they have this desire to be like them <laughs> and then when I hear guys joking about going to the gym because they may have to wear a costume that shows their arms and their chest and they feel like they're not bulky enough or their body that they have now isn't good enough to show I realize that what I'm doing is worth it and even if it just helps one person, I, I think that, <laughs> I think that it's worth it. So I hope you guys see it too. Let's go on to the video. Unfortunately, um, the internet cut out at the beginning and it didn't save some of the recording. Um, so I'm just going to tell you the questions and then tell you her answers um, for them and then we'll get Back, we'll get into the interview. Um, so my first question was what made you want to become a model and she said that her mum did it um, when she was younger and she gained a lot of confidence from him. Um, she also had this idea in her head, you know, the, the fantasy stuff that you get, that she thought it would be, you know, a nice hobby, easy to make money. She also, you know, imagined herself travelling around the world and all the free clothes she would get. Um, that, that was the image in her mind when um, she, she signed up to do it. Um, and basically the, the, <laughs> the easiest way to say it is because the second question is why did you quit? And the easiest way to say it is she quit because it was none of those things. Obviously she was only doing it as like a side hustle I guess, but uh, the point being it, it, she didn't get free clothes, she didn't make a lot of money and um, it did not help her confidence at all. Um, she, said, she said that she didn't like the people, it was very competitive, she didn't like that environment. And she didn't like how they photoshopped and she capitalised everything um, to make you look perfect. She says that the photos she has of herself aren't of her and they're not her and she doesn't like that. The modelling agencies were also very strict with your hair, body, tattoos, piercings. So you know, they, they controlled how your hair looked, how your body looked, how if you had tattoos, if you had piercings, where they were, that kind of stuff. And she just hated how much control they had and how much they, they made you to be this person that you know wasn't you she she did also say that it she, while she was being a model she did not have as much self-confidence as she does now and you will see and um, she is gorgeous she is so amazing she's so talented i am so glad that i met her but she, you know her self her self-confidence was so bad during the time that she was a model because of everything that happens and, uh, because of the way that they were treated and the, that they photoshopped their bodies and everything so she didn't 
she didn't like that. And so because of that, she quit. Anyways, they were the first two questions. They were the only questions um, that didn't get answered in uh, the video because it was cut out. So now we can officially get to the real video. <laughs> So the next question is, how did you find the pressures of body image while being a model? I think there are lots of pressures, but because of what I said um, about the competitive environment, I mean, they, they all want to, to be the, the best model. And yeah. that. But it's weird because the moment I started feeling bad about myself and because of, the, of those pressures, I quit like immediately <laughs> I don't know I don't think nowadays there are that kind of pressures I think there is in process of changing but yeah there right. are lots <laughs> and and they told you how, how to the the proportions of your body that the I don't know how to say this yeah. and this and yeah. and to be skinny and that was like a a, a big pressure to be skinny Right, yeah, so they, they wanted you to be as thin as possible. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. <laughs> so I mean, we've, I guess we kind of already answered this, but it's, do you feel the same pressures now, not modelling? Oh, I, I thought about this a lot because, um, no, <laughs> I, I'm very confident about myself now, but I have to do a lot of therapy and I have to beat a lot of new people and I have to travel and I was today thinking that also Australia I think it helped me a lot because I felt really pretty there <laughs> and you are pretty you're so pretty oh my god is that because everyone was just like you're so gorgeous <laughs> oh. but that didn't happen to me didn't happen here in Argentina yeah. it only happened in Australia so <laughs> it was really crazy but like look at you oh <laughs> amazing traveling and therapy and good people that makes me that made me a, a very confident person yeah uh the next question is do you think there is a stigma around models and the size they have to be um yeah of course the size they, they have to be and also um how, how they have to be i i mean women have to be very feminine and men have to be very masculine and i don't know the way they behave that's like that's a big stigma and and yeah, also about the the, the 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 perfect noses the perfect face yeah. and and if you don't they're going to photoshop it to make it look like you do yeah yeah Ugh, that's it <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the the stigma around models is that they have to be for well for females is they have to be skinny and for males is they have to be fit like ripped like six packs and like big muscles or um, also skinny. I, I think there are agencies that are looking for skinny boys and also fit boys, but I I think there is I don't know maybe it's just Argentina but it's like an, a new how do you say um trend 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 it's trend 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 and you trend to, to look for models that are their selves that's um, good that's what you want right yeah that's great yeah I do. those are agencies i, I believe <laughs> i do think that it's definitely becoming a more and more um thing of people wanted to see real people yeah you know and that's what yeah like there was a bond ad I don't know if you have bonds but it's like an underwear company uh-huh yeah um and they had recently had an ad that I thought was amazing they had so many different people from yeah like different races different sizes different all kind of things that all just chilling in a field wearing underwear and I think one of the things that really got me is that they had people in their looks like late 60s or 70s in oh. underwear as well and I was like that is representation yeah I was like because yes. right? yeah right? <laughs> there is also um what makes me very mad and um, when when there are photos of unreal people because 
maybe teenagers think they are like real people, but yeah. they are real bodies and they really use a lot of shop Photoshop. Yeah, yeah. So that just the amount that they change people's appearance and then they have I mean, to... You have seen my pictures, but it's not me. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree about like the young people they get this idea that this is what beauty is because this is what they see and and they're told this is beautiful guys are gorgeous and everything and then they believe themselves oh I don't look like that I must not be beautiful yeah 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 that (laughs) yeah that's it (laughs) is that what you were gonna say I mean they have the the desire of become a a non-real people and that's very I don't know we they have the desire to become something that they can't attain because it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist <laughs> because Photoshop. you have... This is obviously a random time, I guess, to bring it up, but there was something that, you know, Barbies, like the doll, yeah, that they they actually... Um, someone went in and figured out, like, the actual proportion size of them and they re- would not be able to survive. They could only fit, like, one lung their half of their intestines like some like a a spleen or whatever like they they couldn't fit all their organs inside of a barbie size proportion how sorry <laughs> yeah so why so someone made a realistic um barbie doll like they made um a realistic proportion size barbie doll and they j- <laughs> it's I mean, it's real, but the, 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 the difference in them is so scary. <laughs> All right, so the last question is, do you have any stories about modeling that really stand out to you? I don't know. I don't know if they are going to work. Once um, these makeup artists mm-hmm. got mad at me because I, I didn't sleep well. And I have, um, how do you say this? Bags. Bags. Bags under your eyes. <laughs> because... It's normal to have it. Yeah. <laughs> to have. And she got mad at me and didn't want me to ma- put makeup. I don't know. She got mad. That's um, so strange. That's literally her job, right? Like. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were very big. Oh, I okay. have to admit that they are normal. <laughs> People and, get tired. Yeah. <laughs> and there was this photographer that didn't let me smile because have you seen that all all the models and in their photos they are always serious yeah they do like and yeah and you have (laughs) seen me i don't know how to be serious i'm always smiling (laughs) look at your smile it's half your face right you're like look at me I, i literally can't be serious and in the photos i can't be serious you're like i want to have fun i'm here to have fun (laughs) I want to smile in my photos and yeah she didn't let me so I mean in the in the pictures I'm like this I don't know I don't know <laughs> yeah I don't know they should include more smiles I in agree magazines and Instagram and everywhere because it's smiles are fun especially I, yours just are so infectious people smiling like I want to be happy <laughs> um so we have the um, articles. So I've come up with a couple articles that I think were interesting and I want to uh, discuss because I think they're kind of interesting. So you said you couldn't access one of them because it wouldn't allow you. But that's okay. I will just, I'll read the excerpts that I've gotten from it. Sure. And then we can try and, yeah, elaborate on that. So it, it was from, there's an article from The Guardian um by Sarah Zara Ziff I don't know anyways um and it's titled yes you should feel bad for models we're being told to go diet or go broke most working models um though have no leverage to negotiate a contract or make demands of the agency so contracts are often always one-sided giving the agencies a huge amount of control over models careers and as you said this is and in some cases even their diets so there are some contracts that models would sign that say they have control over their diets and 
they actually mention one model whose modeling agency was withholding her earnings, so keeping her money until she lost inches from her hips. Oh, I know. Um, so she just wanted to get paid the money that she was owed and moved to another better agency, but she'd signed an exclusive multi-year contract to the agency and they were sponsoring her work visa. So this is where it comes in. It was either diet or go broke. Oh, wow. They're so yeah. horrible. Yeah. So they were literally telling her that she has to lose this, like, you know, however much inches from her hips or she doesn't get paid. I, I, I'm healthy. Why? Yeah. <laughs> That's not even the worst one. She can literally die. Um, yep. Yep, it's not even the worst one. So the model Amy Lemons was the first to admit to me that she'd struggled to fit the clothes, so the clothes that she was given. Um, Lemons reached instant supermodel status when she appeared on the cover of Italian Vogue at 14. Anyways, a few years later, as she developed a more womanly physique because she got older, um, she told me that her then agency demanded that she eat only one rice cake a day. Rice cake? Um, it's just, it's just like a little cake of rice. Like literally it's just like, I think, yeah. I think it's, they also have like biscuit things that are rice. I'm assuming. Anyways, it's just literally one small thing made up of some sort of rice thing. That was it. That's the only thing she could eat in a day. This is where it gets worse. And if that didn't work to minimize the curves that she was getting, she should only eat half a rice cake. Um. And this is this is what she said. She said, Lemons got the hint. They were telling me to be anorexic, flat out. Yeah. It's just so disturbing that these agencies are telling actual people to starve themselves. And 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 I mean it's like really young girls, so right so they are going to to enjoy the rest of their lives i've just added some comments which would our bodies use food to produce the energy yeah like with nutrition that we need to survive that's how it works yeah we're not we're not built for that we're not built to survive off one rice cake a day more a lot more than a rice cake (laughs) yeah the other thing i did note here that i've i've that is that um in the article they talked about her um you know she just thought that everyone was naturally slim obviously because she was surrounded by models so she was a naturally thin person in terms of how her body worked and how it looked so until models and like her friends started opening up to her about their struggles she never realized that they don't naturally look like that and so the point is is, you know is that everyone is different some people are just naturally smaller than others and some Mm -hmm. people are just naturally bigger than others because it depends on again well like your bones and stuff if you have broad shoulders you're gonna have broad shoulders if you have you know your height your hips etc like you can't change your bone structure not everyone can look the way that these models look a because they're on most not all of them again but a lot of them would be unhealthy to some degree whether that's because they're starving themselves to get to the point that they can fit in the clothes or they just have a very mentally um they have an unhealthy relationship with their mind because of the working but again not all of them some of them probably have a great relationship with modeling and a great relationship with their body um, can't speak but this is for the vast majority of every like and especially the people that this article is talking about um okay so the second um article that we have is about victoria's secret um and it's it's from insider and it's written by amanda curls i call oh i'm terrible with pronouncing names anyways <laughs> mostly because i don't want to get them wrong so i just like <laughs> make some sounds and hopefully it comes out right anyways so it's titled victorious 
Uh, Victoria's Secret is being applauded for hiring its first plus size model, but the brand doesn't deserve the praise. Now, this was written back at the end of 2019, so it is a couple of years old, but I, th- I think it's, it's still pretty relevant, I think. Yeah. So I have some excerpts again, and then we can discuss our fun comments. Okay, yeah. So... Um, Basically, the article is saying that Victoria's Secret hired a plus size model, but she wasn't actually hired by Victoria's Secret. She was hired by a company called Blue Bella that the brand Victoria's Secret were partnering with for a plus size campaign, um, which the plus size model Tate, I think that's her last Tate. name. Yeah. Um, Tate um, was modeling for. And that's kind of what the article's talking about. So the the article states, you know, the fact that Victoria's Secret couldn't commit to hiring a plus size model on its own without collaborate collaborating with an already inclusive brand also speaks volume. And then Ed Razak, again with the names, I'm not very good, but the former CMO of Victoria's Secret's parent company, so the big company brand, L Brands, um, they said we market to who we sell to and we don't market to the whole world. And they said, he then later said, we attempted to do a television special for plus sizes in 2000 um, and no one had any interest in it. They still don't, which um, I find, I find kind of funny because, you know, they say they don't market to the whole world, which is true. They sell women's clothing. So like there you already have a smaller margin than the whole world. But if they actually um, did include all kinds of people, they might just gain a bigger market for themselves rather than the market that they're narrowing themselves into. And then the other problem with what he said is that um, they tried making a separate show for plus sizes. Yeah, that's... It's, so it's, not, the, it's not the point. Um, like... It's, it's not that no one had, well, yeah, it is. No one had any interest in it because they, they want, um, they want that inclusivity. They want them to just be in the normal shows, the shows that already exist, that already have such a big following. That's what they want. That's what, you yeah. know, that's what people are looking for. Not a, own, its own show. Like, yeah. um, anyways, and then. Yeah, so the article then compares Victoria's Secret to other brands that are more inclusive, such as Airy, I guess. Uh, and then it talks about Rihanna's fashion show for her lingerie oh. brand, which um, featured a diverse cast of models and celebrated various genders, body types, and skin tones. After the show be- began streaming on Amazon, they compared it to Victoria's Secret's annual runway event, which in 2020 was, was cancelled, which... I don't know whether they would have cancelled it due to the coronavirus, but they said that they cancelled it due to pressures because people were um, basically bullying the Victoria's Secret. Yeah. They, they're like, look at this. This is what you should be doing. Why aren't you doing it? Um, and then it goes at the end to say, because Victoria's Secret has long failed to diversify its cast of models, the brand's latest campaign does not seem genuine, which is the plus size campaign um if victoria's secret really hopes to reinvent its business the brand needs to focus on implementing genuine changes rather than making token gestures hence the and the model but also they only hired one model and they didn't even hire her so that was kind of the whole point anyways yeah that is the article so what what were your thoughts on that i i first thought I have, I don't know. I, I, I didn't know much about Victoria's Secret because, because it doesn't exist here in Argentina, but I start um, looking for information. Yeah. <laughs> I think it is like on a decline. Yeah. I, I don't think these brands are going to, to work in the future anymore because, well, people complains because we, we all want um, 
to the size models and every type of, of bodies and people and I don't know. I do have an opinion about um, plus size models. I think um, I think it's very important that um, all brands have them because um, I, I don't know how to say it. I think they, they're worth uh, a, a lot of attention because many of them um, are like not afraid to speak loudly about the modern ideals of women's um, beauty and how they are forced to to make sacrifice that they don't want to 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 make yeah um, I don't know <laughs> that yeah because I think because obviously American sizing is a lot different I think to a lot of other places like I think an American size eight or US eight is like for us so like an Australian size 12 size 12 so be a size 8 there and these models are size 1 and 2 or like no 0 yeah so 0 2 4 6 uh-huh. and so models are being 0 and 2 and I'm a size 8 I mean yeah in a US sizing I'm a size 8 I'm not plus sizing I'm not even that kind of stuff but even no. just me I'm not represented in modeling or even a lot of people, because a lot of people are size 10 and 12, so size 6 and 8, like US 6 and 8, and models aren't even up there. So yes. even that- even talking about plus sizing, it's, it's not even just plus sizing, it's just <laughs> a range of sizing. So even just the fact that the models have to be 0 and 2 when the majority of the population is above a six yeah and you know it also makes me like mad <laughs> yeah angry. It's, not, it's so it's so ridiculous yeah i get it they should represent everything and <laughs> and that and, and it would be because it's not fair that people um get excluded you know yeah, yeah like that you know people like that's that's why I just keep coming back to the we market to who we sell to, and I'm like, who are you marketing to? Like, <laughs> are you not as a women's lingerie brand, right? Are you not mark trying to market to all the women you possibly can? Yeah, isn't that you want to make money, right? Like, isn't that the purpose? Are uh, basically the modeling <laughs> world. I guess it's kind of what we're saying. It's just very messed up. So yeah, is there anything is there anything else that you want to talk about slash just get out there or like say something maybe to people who are thinking about going into modeling or anything? Um I think I have said what I think, but um maybe to highlight that celebrities and models are always photoshopping themselves so these photos are not real and we should know that we should take in count that and maybe it's cliche but i don't know and that everyone you know has natural flaws um to us to accept even though some people can't and it's okay to not not accept them and um, but i think I don't know, everybody's, everybody's, like, beautiful the way they are. Yeah. And we should say it more. That's what I think. <laughs> no, everyone should say it more. Because what do you, do you have any advice for people who might want to go into the, like, thinking of going into modelling? Um, don't listen. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Don't um <laughs> Yeah, literally don't listen to, to, to what they say. Like don't don't stop being you. Do you think it's something that if they're really interested in they should try? Because yeah. I, I think um when when I 
when you talk about the articles, I think uh, there are some things that should be spoken more. I don't know if everyone is aware what happens to models. No, uh, I don't. I definitely <laughs> don't think so because, obviously, I think it's it's very clear in the way that I before even reading like researching so I could like talk to you about models and everything. I like I knew obviously, I. I knew that they um, had extreme diets and like they, they, they did all these things, but I didn't realize that I just thought it was kind of like the pressures of being a model of being skinny. I didn't realize that it was the actual agencies and companies saying that they had to do this. Like that was definitely a part I didn't realize. And then the money and all of that kind of stuff. And even you uh, before becoming a model, like thinking it was this glamorous life, like, that's yeah. like you said no one talks about the fact that it's not a glamorous life yeah yeah this has been Lucci talking about her experiences being a model and the modeling industry in general um <laughs> and she did so well right she was so worried that she wasn't gonna like be able to um converse in English because she hasn't done it in forever but look at her so well so well, basically just as well as I did, and I didn't do very like. No. And I am <laughs> English is the first language, and I can't even speak it properly. So, <laughs> um, amazing, did very well. Um, but <laughs> there were only a couple of words, and you knew what they were. You just couldn't remember them, and I don't remember half the English words. So that's fine. Um, all right, I well. Correct. <laughs> I need to learn Spanish. Maybe they can converse in Spanish. Um, anyways, all right, that's it, guys. We'll, um, well, I mean, I'll see you. I don't know, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but, um, all right, hope you enjoyed. Hopefully, this sheds some light on the modeling industry and stuff. Yeah, she's waving preemptively. <laughs> I like to talk. Anyways, bye. 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 <laughs> oh.